Welcome to a special edition of Meet the Leaders. I'm Dara Wells, and we are in the State Capitol Building in Charleston, West Virginia. We are also delighted to have the newly appointed Senate Majority Leader, Tom Takuba. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much. I, I, wanna, I wanna quote uh, Senate President uh, Mitch Carmichael. He said when he appointed you that you are incredibly well-versed on the issues and you are liked on both sides of the aisle. Um, that seems to me to be the most important thing uh, when you're trying to get stuff done. Yeah, absolutely. I don't expect to be an expert um, on all issues. I appreciate his sentiment, but, um, but I'm, I'm getting there quickly. Yes. Uh, so what's the learning curve like? I mean, coming into it, what are your priorities? Well, there's a bunch. Mo most of all, um, keep West Virginia moving forward. You know, we've had a pretty aggressive agenda. I think we've done a lot in four years. If you just look back uh, to see where we were, um, it was pretty disparaging. You know, fa uh, people were leaving the state. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Industry was shutting down. So we've turned a lot of that around. Um, when we first started taking the task, uh, the comment was made, it's going to be like turning a school bus on a tennis court, just inching back and forth, inching back and forth. And I think we're starting to see a clear road ahead. Uh, I think the people are starting to see that. Um, we're given one of the largest pay raises in West Virginia state history with no new taxes. Um, our budget estimates or surpluses are record breaking and hopefully they'll continue to trend upward. But there's a lot of room we still have to, to go for. Right. Now there's a tradition of uh, serving on both finance and judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, you want to continue on both of those committees? I do. I think those yeah. are two of obviously the most important committees. Um, and most bills are going to funnel to one of those two at some point mm -hmm. or another. So um, for me to, to um, keep a good handle on everything, I think it's important for me to continue that tradition. Let's talk about you. You're a doctor. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I imagine that health issues are of great concern as well to you. Extremely. Yeah. And uh, they'll continue to be. Um, we're very fortunate. Um, I was passionate to get into politics because of health care. It, well, tell me about it. Why, yeah. yeah, what made you decide to, to switch from being uh, strictly a physician to going into politics? Well, because health care affects everything. It affects budget, it affects um, jobs, it affects, mm -hmm. you name it, There's health care plays a role in it. Right. And I was concerned that um, they needed more expertise in, in that arena. Just from what I would see, the, the policies that were kind of being handed down at the time. Um, so I got involved, and, and that's why we have so many physicians involved. You know, West Virginia is very fortunate. We have six physicians currently. Uh, three in the Senate, three in the House. No kidding. And, um, What's probably more impressive that, that those are active physicians. Most state legislators that have physicians, they're retired physicians. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pulmonary critical care specialist. Uh, Ron Stallings, an internist. Mike Maroney, an uh, interventional radiologist. Um, and really surrounds the entire part of the state. Well, Joe Ellington is an OB guy down mm -hmm, in the southern mm -hmm. part of the state. Uh, Matt Roebuck in the uh, western part of the state in the Huntington area. So. Um, a very aggressive group, but healthcare is important, and that's why we're all getting involved. Right. Um, yeah, I want to talk to you about some of your issues in terms of healthcare. You are a strong opponent of the anti-vaccine movement. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's let's discuss that. I, I, and you know, I think it's also connected in some way to the opioid epidemic because you have grandparents raising small children, and if the grandparents have vaccinations that have worn off, that's a real danger to kids, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So our two um, weakest populations are, are uh, children and, and the elderly. Right, right. And with the opioid epidemic, there are so many grandparents that are now becoming parents again, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and so their immunity has oftentimes uh, waxed and waned off. Now right. why they're still protective is something called herd immunity. And so the way immunizations work, everybody's uh, flu shot, for example, uh, doesn't always give them max benefit. It doesn't give them 100% protection. But when you have enough people being immunized, uh, you see disease prevalence completely uh, dissipate or, or markedly reduce. And so um, herd immunity is so important. So those elderly uh, folks are still protected because everybody under them are, are vaccinated. Right. And so um, I think you've seen this trend in California, for example. They're one of the more liberal, free thinking, um, but, but they're seeing the effects of, of what a, a um, open vaccination policy gets them. And so they have now moved, you know, West Virginia and Mississippi, uh, unfortunately, are the butt of a lot of jokes, but immunizations is one thing we get really right. right. So, so just in conclusion, a flu shot doesn't give you the flu. No, that's right. So the flu shot is a dead attenuated virus. So people get the flu shot at the same time that all the viruses are going around. So they'll get 
Pair influenza 1, 2, 3, RSV, human metanumivirus. There's so many other viruses that make you ache, cough, uh, make your teeth hurt, but that's not the flu. Flu goes to the lung and will kill you, so please mm -hmm. get your flu shot. All right, done. I've already gotten the shot. As a doctor's wife, I have no choice, so uh, flu shot done. Um, you have a very broad, though, health agenda. Um, especially as a physician. So let's talk about uh, some of the other aspects. You had, a, you had a bill to ban smoking in a car when a child under 16 is riding. Is, it did not go through, it did not pass. Uh, are you gonna try again? Or do you have other priorities that maybe you're gonna take precedence? Well, it passed the health committee. Uh, yeah, and I know, it passed the judiciary. Committee. Right, yes, right, 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 right. So, um, yeah, I think so. You know, that, that bill came along um, uh, as many of my thoughts do from, from patients and my constituents. Mm -hmm. And so um, people don't appreciate how harmful the effects of secondary tobacco smoke are, especially in confined spaces. And so I'm not trying to take anybody's personal freedoms away, but, but they need to understand how vitally important it is not to be smoking in confined spaces with an adult, really, but especially a child. Lungs are still developing up to about 21 years old. So um, what the bill did, it was a secondary offense. Uh, if you have a minor, it was 16. I think we're going to bump mm -hmm. that to 17 because oh, legal really? age for smoking is not eight till 18. Uh -huh. um, and um, we're maybe looking at some different approaches to that bill. Maybe. Um, uh, instead of uh, you paying a fine, you get on the DMV website and maybe taking in uh, a, an educational video to show you the harmful effects. And if right. you take that in, you don't even get a ticket. But but I think if you make awareness, uh, it, it'll help, especially the youth, not become addicted, not not be damaged from cigarette smoke. We see a lot of public service announcements now about the dangers of smoking, and they are really graphic. I yeah. mean, really graphic, and you're thinking gross, but they are effective. I think they work. Uh, well, something's working. We're, we're finally starting to see, uh, for the first time in a couple of decades, the smoking rates decline in West Virginia. Hopefully that trend continues. Tom, I think we have about 30 seconds left, so I'm going to give the floor to you. Um, bottom line, um, final thoughts on where the state has been and where you'd like to take it as the new Senate Majority Leader. Well, I, I, the only thing I would ask is, um, you know, it, it's so easy to be critical, and I was one of those guys. Um, but everybody here has huge hearts. They're in it for the right reason. They're trying to make the state better. So uh, it's so easy, especially in these days of social media, to criticize. What I would ask mm -hmm. you to do is keep an open mind, support your legislators, and before you criticize, talk to them. Make a phone call and, and, and see if you can't help the issue versus argue against it. Beautiful. Senator, thank you so much. Thank Thanks for joining us. Glad to be and here. that'll do it for this portion of Meet the Leaders. I'm Dara Wells. Thanks for joining us.